Number 28. Consider the structures shown below. Draw all possible resonance structures. So the first resonance structure that we can draw, we can take a lone pair from the negatively charged oxygen atom. It's nucleophilic. We could use that lone pair to form a pi bond and then push the two pi electrons on this carbon. So we're going to get a carbanion, a carbon with a negative charge. So that's the first resonance structure that we can draw. Now we can take this lone pair, form a pi bond, break this pi bond, and put those electrons on a sulfur atom. So now the sulfur is going to have three lone pairs, and it's going to carry the negative charge. Now let's move on to part B. Identify the major resonance contributor. So which of these three resonance structures is most stable? Is it structure A, structure B, or structure C? Is it better to put the negative charge on the oxygen atom, the carbon atom, or the sulfur atom? So in the periodic table, here's carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and here's sulfur. If we were to compare oxygen versus carbon, we know that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Therefore, oxygen can better stabilize a negative charge than carbon. So structure B is the least stable. This would be considered, this is considered a minor resonance contributor. Now, what about comparing oxygen and sulfur? Which of the two atoms can better stabilize the negative charge? So oxygen is a second row element. Sulfur is a third row element. Sulfur is bigger, and so it has more volume in which it can displace that negative charge. As a result, it's more stable to put the negative charge on the sulfur atom than the oxygen atom. So when getting these questions, if you're trying to decide where to put the negative charge to create the most stable structure, it's better to put the negative charge on the more electronegative atom and on the atom that's bigger. The bigger the atom is, the better it can stabilize the negative charge. And think of the halogens, fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide. Iodide is the weakest base in this group. For one reason, it's very big relative to fluoride. So fluoride is smaller, it's less stable, it's a stronger base than iodide. For one reason, is that negative charge is concentrated in a smaller space, whereas this negative charge is more dispersed over a larger volume. Now, I want to take a moment to let you know that the video that you're currently watching only represents one test question out of the 90 questions that are found in my Organic Chemistry 1 Exam 1 video. So for those of you who want access to the full video, check out the links in the description section below this video. Now let's get back to the problem. So atoms that are large can better stabilize a negative charge than smaller atoms. So the most stable structure is going to be structure C, where the negative charge is on a sulfur atom. So therefore structure C represents the major resonance contributor. Now what about part C? Draw the resonance hybrid.
So first, let's draw the things that don't change. Sulfur will have at least two lone pairs, and oxygen will have at least two lone pairs. Sometimes it has three, but for the most part, it always have at least two. Now the double bond can be here, it can be here, or it can be here. So the pi electrons are free to move in this region. So this part here doesn't always have a double bond. Here it's a single bond. Same is true for this part. Here it's a single, here's a double. So anywhere in this region, the double bond can be. Now the negative charge is dispersed among three atoms. So the sulfur atom carries a portion of that negative charge, the carbon atom as well, and the oxygen also shares the load in carrying that negative charge. So the negative charge is dispersed among all three atoms, but the majority of the time, the negative charge will be on a sulfur atom because that leads to the major resonance contributor. So the real resonance hybrid is going to look more like this than like the other two. It's not gonna be exactly the structure, but the majority of it will look like this because this is the most stable structure. So the closer the two structures are in energy, the more similar they will resemble in actuality.